Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus, my Lord. And up from the grave, he arose with a mighty triumph over his foes. He arose, a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose. He arose. He arose. Hallelujah. Christ arose. Let me appreciate that, Lord.
clothed himself in human flesh, was born in, in a manger, in a stable, lived a sinless life, preached the good news that the kingdom of, of God has come. It's available to all mankind. And then on that Friday, he went to the cross. We call it Good Friday. It was bad for him. He suffered, bled, and died. But it was good for us. Because he paid our sin debt. Hallelujah, somebody. He went to the grave. And Saturday was silent. But early. I said early. On Sunday morning.
just passed this morning. Is he coming to her? And his word be a lamp to our pathway. Help us tell God to remove all things away from us now. As we enter into the worship service, give us a clean heart, clean mind. And we may accept you as our Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. 
Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands, and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Yes, yes, yes. Jesus. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and God, my Lord and my God. Yes. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Amen. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. God and a blessing to the hearing and the receiving of his word. I know that he 
we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Jesus. That you decided to die for us. Yes, yes. A little sinner like me, dear God. Thank you. You could have come down. Oh, yes, God. But you decided to die. Yes, 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 yes. For us. And we thank you that on the third day, you were raised from the grave. And now you have all power in your hand. Thank you for what you did for us. That which we could not do for ourselves. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who indwells us and witnesses to us with your word that we belong to you. We stand on your promises that just as you came the first time, that you are coming again. We praise you because you are Lord. We worship you because you are King. Speak now through your word that we might hear your voice. Move me out of the way and get glory for yourself. We praise you. We thank you. Save somebody today. Heal somebody today. Deliver somebody today. Free somebody shackles today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To your name. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus and for his cause we stand today with thanksgiving and praise on this Resurrection Sunday. It is the day that made a difference. The difference. Good Friday is the greatest day in the world. Resurrection Sunday goes right along with it. For if Jesus had not died, all of mankind would be lost. We would have no hope. And if he just died and he didn't get up, amen, somebody. We'd just be going to the cemetery praying over a rock. We'd be praying like we pray in the Buddha. We'd be searching and going to uh, some place looking for Muhammad. But there's no grave for Jesus. We don't have to go to the cemetery and stand out there and pray to a rock. Because he lives. You ask me how I know he lives. Because I he lives within my, my soul. So I'm saying he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me. I am. Amen. There's a word from the Lord found in the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter, verses 26 through 29, which was so well read by Elisha Brown. I want to lift, let me just read it again, verse 26. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside. And Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hand and reach your hand here and put it in my side. Do not be unbelieving, but 
believe it. Yes, yes. Amen, somebody. Amen. And Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Reach your finger here and look at my hand and reach your hand here and put it in my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Amen. Amen. I want to use as a preaching subject today, thank God for the scars. Thank God for the scars. Amen. Can you say that to somebody? Thank God for the scars. Amen. Tell somebody else. Thank God. Say it like you mean. Thank God for the scars. Amen. As, as human beings and life travelers, it is a reality that we cannot and we will not make it through this life without obtaining some scars. And if we did a physical check today, if we asked you to roll up your sleeve or pull up your pants leg or show us your hand, all of us, from some place or another on our body, will reveal a scar or two. Do I have a witness? We all have scars. Don't, don't look at that model, male or female, and say they are perfect. They are flawless. They don't have any scar because all that is airbrush. Amen, somebody. All of us have scars. Deborah Nils had scars in mind when she wrote, This line was a boyhood scratch. Uh, this line's from a malehood match. This line traces a thousand mile smiles. And, and this line shows hard times and many miles. I touch and feel and know from afar the life you live written in every scar. Because all of us okay, have scars. Yes, yes, yes. And every scar has a story. Right. Some, some scars uh, have cool stories. Like uh, when, when people ask you about how you get that scar, uh, there's an interesting adventure that's attached to the scar. I got that scar while I was running a marathon through the jungle and then we went up a hill and I fell down and uh, I got the scar on my leg. I got the scar when I was six years old riding my bike so fast down the hill and my mama called my name and I forgot to put on brakes. I got this one in the fourth grade when, when Billy hit me on my head I had to turn around and punch and it was all from then. And, I got this one when I was cooking and some grease popped up on me. And, uh, I reached across a lamp without a shade and the bulb burned my arm. Uh, I got this one when we, Bowman was playing Branchville. Amen, hey, somebody. Uh, I got this one later in life when I had surgery. They had to cut me. And, I got another one when I was in that car accident. By the grace of God, I didn't die. But I got a scar to remember. 
Oh, Deacon Johnson or Deacon, Deacon Zimmer. I got this one for when I was in the war. Yeah. Amen, somebody. And the list goes on and on and on. Yes. And, yes. on. Yes. And, on. Yes. and then there are stars that tell stories that we don't want told. Yes. Do I have a witness? Yes. Some scar stories are embarrassing. They are disappointing. They are hurtful and, uh, uh, to remember these scars beg to be covered. Covered. They, they, they beg. Uh, they, 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 uh, we, we would cover them with uh, clip, well, not clear on, but whatever the cover makeup is. All right. Cover story, cover girl. <laughs> Uh, we, we would go to the store and buy some fade, scar fade medicine to put on there to make it. Or either we'd go to the plastic surgeon yeah. to have those scars removed. Do I have a witness? Yeah. Some scars beg to be covered. They, they, they beg to be left alone. They beg to not be seen by anyone unless we remember the pain associated with the scar. We all have scars and the experience we go through leave marks. Physical trauma leaves marks, but so do emotional and spiritual experiences. Amen, somebody. I know there are, there, there are at least one or two, maybe three people, even here this morning, who have had some wounds they experienced in the church. Amen. Amen. And church hurts do, church hurt, church wounds do hurt. And they leave scars. Sometimes people get hurt in the church and they say, I ain't never going back anymore. Do I have a witness? Broken relationships leave marks. Unfulfilled dreams leave marks. Lost friendships and lost family members leave scars. Betrayal, somebody stabbed you in the back and you still have the scar to prove it. Falls and failures, mistreatments and disappointments and the times when we, were, we have been burned literally and figuratively. And there are heart wounds. They all leave. Scars. And often it's the damage of the non-physical wounds that last long after the event has happened because they remind us of the hurt and the pain and the shame and even the sin we experienced when we were going through. But listen, yet it is through scars that we are saved. It is through scars that we are forgiven. It is through scars that we are made right with God. Our text this morning is the gospel lesson where Jesus shows us scars. He, he, he goes through suffering. He goes through pain. He goes through agony and he goes through death for you and for me and and, 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 and and comes out on the other side carrying the evidence that he's been through something and the evidence is his scar. Hallelujah somebody. This story takes place on the first Sunday, the first Easter Sunday, maybe 12 or 15 hours after the women uh, first discovered the empty tomb. Almost all of Jesus' disciples were gathered together, hiding and, and, and covering and shivering, uh, shaking in, in a locked room uh, because they were afraid of being arrested by the Roman authorities. If they did that to Jesus, they're going to try to come and get us too. So, so they were locked behind the closed doors and suddenly Jesus comes and stands among them and he says, Peace to you. And all this scaredness. Peace to you. And all of your hiding. Peace to you. And all of your hurt that I, that I died on the cross. Peace to you. 
But Thomas wasn't there. And, and you know the story. Thomas, they tell Thomas that the Jesus came. Jesus showed up. And Thomas said, I don't believe. I don't believe. I, I won't. You got to show me. I, I won't believe it unless I see the nail prints in his hand and, and in his feet and the nail prints in his side. Thomas wants proof. He, he wants to see the wounds. He wants to see the scars on Jesus' body. So eight days later, in the midst of it all, Jesus shows up behind closed doors. Hallelujah, somebody. Y'all miss the shot. Because Jesus, he, he, he doesn't have, he doesn't have to, to, to wait for you to open the door. He can come on in. In fact, in fact, I had some situations where I wasn't even looking for Jesus, and Jesus showed up. Anybody had Jesus showed up? You all locked up in your situation. He just showed up. Wait, wait a minute. Go for it. Wait, 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 wait. He shows up, and, and Jesus said to Thomas, reach your finger here. Come on, put, put your hand right here. And, 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 and then reach your other hand and, and put it right, right here. And, 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 and don't be unbelieving, but believe. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen, somebody. And Jesus shows Thomas his scar for several reasons. First reason is this. Jesus' scars confirm his identity. The scar confirmed his identity. Uh, see, see, uh, uh, he, he, he wanted his disciples to know that, that, that he wasn't an, an imposter. This, this wasn't a Jesus lookalike. Y'all not here. This, this was not some long lost twin that looked like Jesus that showed up to claim that he's the Lord. It, it, it confirms his identity, but then Jesus' scar represents our payment. Our payment. The, the scar proclaims the fulfillment of the prophet Isaiah's prophecy that he was wounded for our transgressions. And he was bruised for our iniquity. Jesus came. I came not to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom, as a payment for many. Hallelujah, somebody. Uh, it, it, it confirms his identity. It, 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 it represents his, our payment, but then uh, Jesus' scars represent our peace. The scars proclaim that peace is possible. Yeah. Isaiah continues that same verse in chapter 53 by saying uh, that the chastisement mm -hmm. for our peace was upon him, mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just unpack it just a little bit. Let me just take a little bit out there. The, the punishment mm -hmm. so that we could have peace. Yeah was put on Jesus. Right. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. So, so, that, so and, and by the way, if you look at the Bible, there's an explanation where when, when Jesus shows up, he says, peace to you, yeah. exclamation mark. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Yeah. In, in other words, Jesus said, these wounds represent your peace. Yeah. Your peace with God. The Bible says there's enmity, that, that, that we are at war with God. The wrath of God is on us until we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. You don't even know it if you're not saved. That, that, that you are against God and God is against you. Amen. The, the, his judgment is on you. The only way to escape from God's judgment is to accept Jesus as your Savior. The only way to be at peace with God is through Jesus, who died for you, who was nailed to the cross, who got up on the third day and got scars in his hand to prove that he died for you. Hallelujah, somebody. Uh, the scars represent our peace with God, but then it brings peace with yourself. 
Some of us are fighting with ourselves. Oh, y'all not talking back to me. Some of us are our own worst enemy. Some of us keep doing ourselves. You keep asking yourself, why did I do that? Because you just fight yourself trying to, to trying to make it and find peace in life. Oh, y'all still not hearing me. Still not talking. You keep on sleeping with the same person. You know you're not, the argument where you might, might, might not be sleeping with the same person. You sleep with different people. You keep on hanging out. You keep on drinking. Trying to find your own peace. But that peace that you're sleeping with and that peace you're drinking won't bring you real peace. So he came, that, the scar represents our peace, peace with God and peace with ourselves. But then, 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 then the Jesus' scar represents our healing. Our, our healing. Isaiah said, by his stripes, we are healed. By his stripes, we are healed. I know, I know that's some, 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 some folks' favorite verse. By his stripes we are healed. As if, if you read this verse and you say this verse, you quote it back to God, throw it in God's faith. By this verse, I am healed. No, nah, no. Nah. It, it, it's speaking primarily of uh, your spiritual healing. Right. Yeah. I, I might get one or two people, but most of us will acknowledge that we got some sin sick souls. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Because when I want to do right, I still do wrong. I'm just sick, Paul said. Uh, when, when I would do right, evil is there. And the things I don't want to do, I do. And the things I do, do want to do, I don't do. I'm just messed up. <laughs> because I got a sin sick soul. Amen, somebody. But then, then Paul said, but I thank God that Jesus Christ delivers me. Thank God that his wounds heal me. I don't have to keep doing what I'm doing. Somebody. Primarily spiritual healing. Now he does heal. Amen. According to his will. But you can't claim it and say everybody going to be healed by this verse. Amen somebody. He does heal and he will heal. Sometimes he heals immediately. Sometimes he heals gradually. He heals through doctors. He heals through prescription medicine. He heals but eventually all of us will be healed when we get to heaven. But he, he heals us through his blood. Anybody know that Jesus' blood heals? That, that place that was hurting. Uh, that wound that was wide open. Jesus poured his blood on him and made me whole again. His blood will make you whole. Yes, I'm going to cut it short this morning because I know it's Easter Sunday. But the story of Jesus' scars is about the day God died. God died. Uh, on, on our behalf. The nails in his hand and feet. The spear in his side left a mark, not just for a little while, not just until the third day, but his scars last forever. Now, now if Jesus' scars last forever, what about our scars? Would they ever go away? Will they ever stop reminding us of the hurt we feel so badly? Let, let me just say this, brothers and sisters, beloved. Jesus didn't die to take away our scars. Are you here? Jesus didn't die to take away our scars. He, he, he died, yes, to heal our wounds. He died to bear our pain, yes. But listen, Scars are too important 
to hide away. Our scars are too important to be removed. Why? Because our scars, the X marks the spot. Where our wound was healed. Oh, you miss your shot. And every time I look at that scar, that means that God healed me. Hallelujah, somebody. Every time I look where I had a wound, and now it's covered with skin, it means that God healed me. Hallelujah, somebody. That, that fool you thought you'd never get over. God touched your heart. Change your mind. And now you're done with that. Hallelujah, somebody. That had it you thought you could not stop. God healed you. And now you can say, I'm delivered. The way you used to mismanage your money. You never had a penny in your pocket. Always begging. God touched you. And he healed you. Now you're able to bless somebody else. Hallelujah. That mean attitude and bad disposition when folk didn't even want to be around you. The Lord healed you. He touched you. And now you're a blessing and a joy to be around because God heals us. Don't you ever forget what the Lord has done for you. Don't you ever forget what you used to be. I'm so glad. I said, I'm so glad that the Lord healed me. He picked me up. He turned me around. He changed my mind. He changed my attitude. He changed my word. He changed my direction.
You know, when you get a scab, some of us keep picking with it. Uh, we keep picking with the scab. Take the scab off and then the bleeding again. The Lord wants to heal you. Yeah, as long as you, 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 you picking the scab, you can't be healed. Y'all, y'all miss it. As long as you keep going back to the same situation, you keep going to the same person, going back hanging with the same people, watching the same stuff, you keep opening the wound so it won't be healed. It takes a break. Amen. So I, I'm not talking about slapping a bandage on it and coming to church every night. Slap a band-aid on that one. Uh, take, take the wound off. I mean, take the band-aid off. And let the spirit and the word heal you. That's sad. There's a bomb in Gilead. And the name is Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. He can heal the broken heart. He can lift up those who are falling down. Hallelujah. He'll dry the tear that you're crying in the midnight. I have a witness. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you that you died on the cross. You were wounded, you were pierced for us. Your blood came streaming down. But we thank you that there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's way. When sinners are planted beneath that flood, we lose all our guilty stain and we are healed. You make us whole. We're praying today for the person who does not know you, who has not received you by the forgiveness of their sin. We're praying that they will confess to you, repent, and call on your name so that they can be saved. You said in your word that whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. So save them today. We're praying for the person who straight away. We pray that they would come back. Come back home as a prodigal son who straight away. But he came to himself and came back home. And the father welcomed him with open arms. Praying that the backslider would come back. Person who's without a church home and needs to be united with the church home. We pray that they will come today. So have your way. Have your way. We pray in Jesus' name. The doors of the church open, Jesus is calling. I want to be a follower of Christ. One of his disciples. I want to walk in the newness of life. So let me be a follower of Christ. Let's say that again. If you want to be a follower. I want to be a follower.
them one today. Is that your prayer today? Get up from your seat and come forward. I'll meet you at the door. Say, I want to be one of his disciples. I want to walk in the newness of life. I'm tired of this life.